right here, close this note, and I want you to see that the textbook sections that you're going to be looking at are section 5.1, okay, where you go over physical chemical properties of matter. So I'm going to get you to do some homework questions that review from that section. And here's section number 5.4, and all you need to do in this section for the homework is just to read through on the periodic table, and it's just page 184, okay? So you want to take your periodic table review from here and you want to translate this into the periodic table handout that you've got. And again, if you don't have a handout, that's okay. What do you want to do? Just see, add some sticky notes to your periodic table. Um, see if you can um, print something out even something small or again have a look in your grade nine notes and see what you've got okay so here we go periodic table what do you need to remember first thing you've got a key on your periodic table right it gives you the element box you remember that elements have symbols those symbols always start with a capital letter and some of those symbols have one letter and some of them have two that's the page three in our module notes for this lesson and you can see you're going to review the names and how to spell some of the symbols i bet you memorize some elements number one to twenty in grade nine and that's kind of a common thing that people do. All right, you want to practice some spelling of some of the trickier elements because if you're going to do chemistry in grade 11 and 12 and continue on, you want to practice learning how to spell it properly before we move on. Now, there's always a key on your periodic table. What do you need to remember? You know it's the atomic number and the periodic table is ordered from by number of um, elements. You've got a symbol, the name, and the atomic mass. Okay, you remember the three parts of the... Um, atom, the subatomic particles, we think about them in terms of the acronym PEN. P is obviously your protons, E is your electrons, and N is the neutrons. Okay, protons have what charge? They are positive. Electrons have what charge? They are negative, and neutrons are neutral. Okay, so what determines the atom that you're dealing with? It has to do with the number of protons in the nucleus of the atom. Okay, so for example, you can see iron right here on your periodic table. Every element, every atom of iron in the entire world in the universe has an atomic mass of 55.85 um, grams per mole and the atomic number is 26. Every atom of iron has 26 protons in its nucleus. If it had a different number of protons, you'd be talking about a completely different atom, okay? Because if you change the number of protons, you're talking about a different atom. Can you change the number of electrons? Do you remember that from grade nine? Yes, you can, because atoms like to gain or lose electrons. That's one of the most important trends of the periodic table. It determines how things react and um, what type of atom it is, whether it wants to gain electrons or lose electrons. So the number of atoms, um, the, sorry, the number of electrons can change. That makes an atom into an ion that has either a positive or a negative charge but the number of protons never changes, okay? For that particular atom, it has the same number. Now, do you remember also the, um, the group names or the family names? And you can add these on, okay? Group number one, these are your alkali metals. Group number two are your alkaline earth metals. You can remember that because it ends in the letter E, alkaline, and then earth starts with the letter E, so that's how you can remember which one's the alkali metals versus the alkaline earth metals. Okay, group one and group two. You remember that everything on the left-hand side of the periodic table is a metal element, except for hydrogen, right? That's the one that is fitting here in the periodic table because it's element number one, but really it belongs to the non-metal uh, non side of the periodic table. And over here across the staircase, so on the right-hand side of the staircase, case you have all your non-metals okay and you remember with the non-metals on the periodic table these are the ones that like to gain electrons to fill up their outer shell we'll talk about that in the next module and over here we have our noble gases and we have our halogens and those are the other family or the group names that you want to be familiar with Okay, what kind of elements are right around the staircase? These are the 
metalloids. There are roughly seven of them. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sometimes astatine is as well. They kind of have properties like metals and nonmetals, and we call those the metalloids. So you want to make sure you add that in as well. Metalloids. I know this is a little bit messy, but the other one in the solutions that you can use to tidy it up if you need to. Okay, the last thing that I want to add on to the periodic table is what is um, the group number? And what does that tell you? So the groups go down, and if you are an element in group number one, you have one valence electron. So the group number, that's the ones going down, give you the number of valence electrons. What are they called, the, the rows that go side to side? Do you remember that from grade nine? They're called the periods, and so the period number, so we're going left to right, each period gives you what? The number of energy levels. Okay, so that is really important from grade nine if you can remember that. So if you remember the metals are on the left hand side of the periodic table, they like to have a tendency to lose electrons. The nonmetals are on the right hand side of the periodic table, they tend to like to gain electrons. The group number gives you the number of valence electrons and the row number or the period number tells you how many energy levels an atom has. So for example, hydrogen is in group number one. It has one valence electrons. Its ionic charge is going to want to be one plus because it would really like to be able to lose that electron. Okay. Now hydrogen is a bit of an exception to the rule because hydrogen can gain an electron or lose an electron, but we don't have to worry too, many about, too much about exceptions in grade 10. Okay. If you are an element in group number two, so you're talking about beryllium or magnesium, they have two valence electrons. They would like to be able to give away those electrons. Do you remember why? The answer is always to become stable or happy, to have a full octet, and so every element in energy level, or group number two, sorry, has two valence electrons and their ionic charge will be two plus. If you scoot that all the way over to the right hand side of the periodic table, let's look at the elements that are in group number seven. Usually this has a Roman numeral here so you can remember which one, which number you're looking at. They have seven valence electrons. If you're an element that has seven valence electrons, would you want to lose or gain an electron to become happy? You want to gain an electron, and so you're going to want to um, have eight in total to be ha have a happy, stable octet, and so your ionic charge is going to be one minus. Group number six will be two minus. Group number five will be three minus, okay? So you can add in all of those ionic charges that go along with that. And then when we start looking at electrons, we'll be looking at the period number. So all the elements in row number one have only one valence uh, shell for electrons. Everything in row number two has two valence um, energy levels for those electrons. Energy level number three, so we're talking sodium, magnesium, and everything in this same row here now has one, two, three um, energy levels for the electrons to be found. Okay, so that gives you a quick overview of your um, periodic table. And so I know that was a lot for this module, but again, hopefully most of it is review. And so we'll see you next time we're going to do Bohr-Rutherford diagrams and looking at the difference between atoms and ions. Good luck.